Today, I really want to break the bread of life. I'm on, I'm, I'm my sermon message for today, my sermon title. What's my sermon title? Where is it? At? Call it in. <laughs> Hashtag harvest. Hashtag just do it. Hashtag rent. Rent. Tommy got proper. She said right now. My hashtag said. Rent now. <laughs> Y'all say rent. Rent now. Call it in. Call it in. Come on now. Harvest. Just do it. Rent now. So it's so funny, you know, like prophetically as a prophet, I have to keep reminding people of the season and the time. The season and the time. Like we are in a harvest season and there are things that we have been teaching and, and sowing into you in this hour on harvest and what it means and what you need to do and how to position yourself. How many of you know that that harvest really you in order to manifest you got to position yourself for the harvest. You can't just be like, oh Oh, it's harvest season, hallelujah, and then expect something to sprout up in the name of Jesus and just come to you. <laughs> it ain't just going to come to you. Listen to what I'm saying. Harvest is not just going to come to you. There are some things that we have to do if we are prophetically going to move in our harvest. If we are prophetically going to move in our harvest, we have to make sure that we do the necessary. Somebody say the necessary. The necessary for breakthrough. Because I don't know about you, but I I go into this season with expectation. I go into this season season expecting movement. I go into this season expecting shifting to take place. Amen. See, if you go into this season not really thinking about the shift and not knowing what you want to shift, then you're just in the season with no expectation. But what is it that has to shift in this season in the name of Jesus? Say, something has to shift. Something has to shift. Why? Because I'm no longer in the old season. So I don't expect the same thing that I got in last season. I expect another level in this season. Somebody say this season. Because something has to shift. Guess when? In this season. And so in order for something to shift, I got to have the expectation of the shift. I got to position myself to shift. I got to call it in right now. Right now. Right now. Because there is no way that I'm going to miss a God-ordained move in harvest season. I don't know about you, but I am not a farmer that's going to sit and watch other folk crop pop up. And mine ain't going to pop up. Come on, somebody. It's only popping in this season. So I got to understand that for my blessing to pop, I got I to gotta go get the, the corn so that I can pop the kernels. Come on, y'all. We got to make it plain. Like you want popcorn, you want it to start popping, but you ain't going to get it. You ain't calling for the corn. But I got to understand that when I enter into harvest, I'm expecting things. Yeah. And not only am I expecting things, but I'm doing things. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I am expecting things, but I am also doing things. And matter of fact, watch this. I'm doing things a little differently than I did last season. That's Come on, somebody. Yeah. I'm doing things a little bit more different. And that was my best Barney. I'm doing things a little bit more different than I did last season. You got to look at harvest and first start with you and say, I challenge me in this season. I challenge me in this season. My husband ain't got to challenge me. He ain't got to talk to me about my attitude. He ain't got to talk to me about this. He got, no, you know what? I'm going to challenge me in this season. I'm going to challenge me to do better. I'm going to challenge me to go harder. I'm going to challenge me to be wiser. I'm going to challenge me to go stronger. Anybody in here ready to barbecue and not meal do? Say, I'm going to challenge me in this season. Nobody playing with the devil. So there are some things that I have to do. Number one, the first thing that I'm going to do, we had to call in. Y'all ready to take some notes? How are we going to call it in? How are we going to call it in? 
First, it got to start with the seed. Okay. Sow the seed. Yeah. yeah. For the harvest. That's come on, come on. it. You got to sow to where you want to go. Y'all heard this all weekend, I believe. You got to sow to where you want to go. Watch this. Galatians 6 and 7 says, do not be the seed. God is not mocked. Say he ain't mocked. He ain't mocked. You can't mock my God now. Watch this, y'all. See, watch this. This, this scripture let me know that we be playing with God. Watch this. We be playing with God about harvest. Watch this. It says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Mm -hmm. For whatever a man sows, that he will also what? Reap. Reap. Okay, let's break this thing down. See, y'all be playing with God. See, you. this is what we do. We do. We, we, you, we go tell God what we want. Be like, God, I just want you to. Bless this marriage. Bless this love. Give me some truth. Bless this. Bless. You know how you go and pray? You tell God what you want. Call him up and tell him what you want. Y'all know that? Okay. Okay. So walk with me now. So we call him up. We tell him what we want. Right? Then now God has a question. Is you someone told her? I said, <laughs> okay, watch this. Watch this. Y'all got to follow me on this. See, we say, God, this is what I want to happen. We pray about it. But God said, listen, sis, don't be playing. God ain't going to be mocked. For if whatever you sow, you're going to reap. If you tell him what you want and you ain't sowing toward it, you ain't reaping nothing from it. Come on, somebody. Stop playing with God. You can go to him with a prayer and be like, I want, I want, I want. And God will be like, oh, okay, that's that's a harvest. That's a harvest. So so you tell me you want a harvest, I'm going to ask you where you'll see. You tell me you want to harvest, I'm going to ask you where to see. So, it, I can't go to God and be playing with him. Because God told me, he said, don't be deceived, don't be playing. God ain't going to be mocked. Don't be coming to God with all these prayers, but you ain't willing to sow a seed to get the prayer. Amen. Amen. So, you tell him you are desiring harvest in your life. You want to see something different. Mm -hmm. Then God says, so something different. So something. I want to see something different. So something different. I want to see something different. Do something different. I want to see something different. You can't reap your prayers if you don't sow harvest. So seed towards that harvest. Mm -hmm. See, listen to me. Your prayers are harvest. Mm -hmm. You're praying about harvest. Everybody understand that? Right. You are praying about what? Harvest. You are praying about harvest. So in order to see that harvest, you have to what? Sow the seed. Or else you're doing what with God? You playing. <laughs> God said, look, I say fooling with you in this season. Listen, Linda. God, God has said, I ain't fooling with y'all. I ain't fooling with you. You think I'm playing with you? I just told you don't be deceived. God will not be mocked. That means God is not for you to play with. That's it. That's it. So you coming to me talking about you want, you want, you want. Stop playing with God. Sow the seed. So, so, so what we sow? We sow gifts. We sow talents. We sow time. And here's a cuss word. Y'all ready for me to cuss? We supposed to sow money. But the devil has tricked so many Christians into believing that they can't afford to sow. Amen. 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 They, the devil has tricked so many Christians into believing, well, I can't afford to sow. Well, how you think you're going to reap? Amen. But you, you, you want God to bless you financially, next level, abundance. I want to pay all these bills and have overflow. You want God to do all of that, but you can't sow the seed that you want to harvest. <laughs> Many Christians believe I can't afford the soul of time. Okay, your time, you made a thousand dollars. You you supposed to sow a hundred. Okay. So let me see. How much did you spend on food this week? Uh, how many times did you go out to eat? How much did you pay on gas? How much did you give to your the light bill, the water bill? So I, God only asked for a small portion. But I can afford to give everything else my cuss word. Say it. Money. Money. I can afford to give everything and everybody else my money. money. But I can't give it to God. 
Mm. My God. Okay. So we ain't gonna we ain't gonna linger on that because that the church folk don't like to hear that. Mm -mm. But but here's here's the thing. The enemy will work overtime trying to keep you in fear about giving away your resources. Why? Because he knows how much you stand the gain in both the natural and the supernatural. He knows how much you can gain when you give away, come on somebody, your money. <laughs> Jesus said in Luke 6, 38, that if you give, it shall be yeah. given back unto you, pressed right down, shaken together, mm -hmm. running over, that it was going to just pour into your lap. He said, the amount you give will determine what? Y'all know that scripture. The amount you give will determine what you give back. That's why the enemy don't want you giving back nothing. Because <laughs> he knows that it's going to bless you beyond measure. He was like, well, I know, you know, I like where I'm at and I don't want to give nothing more because I like where I'm at. And so in order to stay where I'm at, if I give, it's going to cut into where I'm at. Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't talking to me this morning. But you got to understand that that would be your only detriment to Genesis 8 and 2. It is promised that while the earth remains, while the earth remains, mm -hmm. seed time and harvest, harvest will not cease. Mm -hmm. So the most important part of sowing is the heart behind the gill. Yep. So when you sow, you got to be acting as if you are a good sower. Yes. God said, be, remember, he said in 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, this is what God said. He said, remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap, will reap sparingly and grudgingly, and he who sows generously, that blessing may come to someone, will also reap generously and will and with blessings. So when you give in sorrow, watch this. When you give in sorrow, meaning that you really don't want to give, mm. there is no faith. If there is no faith, there is no return. Mm. Oh, I'm going to say that again. I got to walk y'all through this. So when you give in sorrow, like you really don't want to do it, there is no faith that God is going to bless it. Because you're worried about what you're giving. But God is saying that, 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 that to please him, you have to have faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if I give without faith, I'm not pleasing God. Pleasing God opens up the door to the blessings of God. Pleasing God opens the door to the favor of God. Pleasing God opens the door to the abundance of God. So if I give grudgingly, then I'm not giving in faith. And if I'm not giving in faith, I'm not giving and I'm not going to receive the abundant harvest. So I gotta, you gotta recognize that if you want, if I say so to where you want to go, if I want a blessed marriage, if I want my marriage to shift, I got to do what? Sow so into another marriage. That's it. That's it. But not any marriage. Right. You got to sow into a marriage that is fruitful, right. that is multiplying, yes. that you can see the harvest Amen. in their marriage. You can see fruit popping up at, all over the place. And then, you know, you be like, okay, I'm going to sow that because that's where I want to go. Amen. I want my marriage to go to that level because, and because of the principle in the law of sowing and reaping, if I want to go there, I got to sow there. That's right. that's right. that's it. That's it. If I want to go there, I got to sow there. If I want my business to be blessed, I'm going to find me a business that's producing gazillions, okay? Because I'm trying to figure out how to get out of this six-figure and break into the seven-figure. So I ain't finna sow into a six-figure business. Come on, so Listen, Linda, I got to find seven figures. I need somebody making seven figures, okay? Eight figures. You find an eight figure. I, I, I can't just skip seven and get the eight. Come on, somebody. I got to find seven figures. So I'm particular about where I'm sowing. Right. If I'm going to grow 
there, I'm going to make sure I sow there. So I'm not going to sow into a six-figure business. I love you. God bless you. I love what you're doing. I speak blessings over it. But this is where God is leading me because I'm strategic in harvest season. I'm strategic of where my finances are going. I'm strategic of where my gifts are going. My talents are going. That don't mean you can't bless people. But when you are on a mission called strategy, strategy in harvest season is going to give you what you desire. You got to have a plan, a system. Somebody say system. It's all about systematic planning. It's all about systematic strategy. It's about knowing what you want, when you want, how you want it. And you're not just going to wait for it to spring up. You're going to do something to get there. I want my marriage blessed. I'm finna just start sowing crazy stuff into a marriage that's, that's, that's blessed and mighty favored, highly favored of God. Amen. What can I give you? Y'all want some lunch? Pastor Derek, can I sow you $50 or you and Pastor Trish go? Uh, can I find you somebody? It ain't got to be us. Go find you somebody. Amen. Amen. You got to sow to where you want to go. It's a principle. And stop playing with God. Praying about it, but you ain't sowing towards it. God says, stop. You mocking me, bro. You mocking me. Stop playing with me. <laughs> Y'all listen, that's prophetic. Stop playing with God. Number two. We gonna call it in. Y'all still calling it in? Yeah. Number two. You gotta get aggressive about reaping your harvest. Get aggressive. Get, I'm going to say that again. You got to get aggressive about reaping your harvest. Where did I get this from? Let's look at Matthew 11 and 12. Matthew 11 and 12 says, And from the days of John the Baptist until the present time, the kingdom of heaven has endured violent assault. And violent men seize it by force as a precious prize, a share in the heavenly kingdom is sought with most ardent zeal and intense exertion. You got to get aggressive about what you want. A common mis misconception about the principle of sowing and reaping is that we now, we sow the seed, then wait for God to do the reaping. Okay, let me say that again. We sow the seed and we wait for God to do the reaping. Well, what does reaping mean? We talked about that this weekend. What does reaping mean? Reaping means that God going to gather it and bring it to me. <laughs> reaping means that God is going to gather the harvest and he's going to bring it to me. That's a common mis misconception. But we as believers, we got to sow the seed and we got to go get the seed. <laughs> okay, okay. We wait for God to do the reaping for us. When we do this, we miss a very important part that we play. How do I go get the seed? We sow the seed. God gives the increase, but we have to gather the harvest. I'm going to say that again. We sow the seed. God, his part is to bring the increase. But we have to go and what? Gather. In other words, you must become a sower and a mower. Come on, somebody. You got to become a sower and a reaper. A sower and a mower. A sower and a reaper. Come on, somebody. You got to go get it. Like Mary Mary said, go get it. Go get it. When they say Come through, okay? I got to be a sower and a mower. I got to be a sower and a reaper. Come on. How do I go get that seed? I sowed into the marriage. I got a spouse. Now I got to begin to mow my own grass. Come on, somebody. I sowed into a marriage. Come on. I got my spouse. Now I got to mow my own grass. I got to cut down some stuff. I got to cut down selfishness. I got to cut down anger. I got to cut down attitude. I got my soul towards it. Now I got to move. Come on, somebody. I got to cut down some stuff because that stuff is interfering with my heart. So I gotta, 
I got to become the sower and the mower, the sower and the reaper. I got to, I got sowed the seed. Come on now. Now we expect God to just do it. God said, no, 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 no. You sow the seed. I bring the increase. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You got to go reap. Amen. You sow the seed. I bring the increase. You got to go reap. Yeah. God be like, well, that's him. That's her. Okay, I saw the seed. I've been sowing. I've been praying. I've been doing stuff. Now it manifests, and now my grass looking crazy. <laughs> well, go do something about it, Linda. Go cut your own grass and stop cutting other folks. Water your own grass and stop watering other folks. Amen. Water your own grass. You got to become the sower and the mower. Cut it down. Cut it out. Because it's interfering with, guess what? Your harvest. Amen. I sow into a business for my business. God brings increase by introducing me to a divine connection. And then if I don't recognize that it's a divine connection, I can't reap a harvest of what that connection would have brought. Right. You sowed it. God brought the increase. And you don't even recognize what he brought. You don't even recognize that God is divinely connecting you with people that will change your life in this season. God is divinely connecting you with people that's going to challenge you to go to another level. God is divinely connecting you with people that make you see things different, talk different, walk different. God is divinely connected because you sowed the seed. He brought the increase and now you don't know what to do with it. Call somebody. When God begins to put people in your life, when God begins to connect the dots for you, you get lazy and you don't show up. Come on. Come on. You get lazy and expect those same people that God divinely connected you with. That when you get in a rut, now they gotta come pray you out your deathbed. Now they gotta come lay hands on you. Now they gotta confront you about being lazy. They gotta confront you about not being in position. But you sold the seed. God brought the increase. And you don't know what to do with the harvest. Come on, somebody. You don't know what to do with the heart. Because you don't even recognize that that's your harvest. Amen. To reap, you got to become aggressive. Because if you leave your harvest in the field, mm -hmm. <laughs> if a farmer leaves his harvest in the field and he don't go get that blessing, it's going to rot. That's it. That's it. If you don't ever cut your grass, you don't be the sower and the mower. Your grass is going to be too hot for you to handle it. You ain't even going to want to look at it. You ain't even going to want to fool with it. Matter of fact, you're going to call somebody else to handle your harvest. And God put you in charge of the harvest. God put you in position. But because you said and looked at it, and then you didn't become the mower of it. You didn't become the reaper of it. Things will begin to die. Things will begin to dry out. Because you didn't get aggressive about your harvest. My God. My God. You didn't get aggressive. Did I go as here? Okay, Amy. You got to sell yourself. I'm going to be aggressive about my harvest. I'm not leaving anything on the table for the, de for the devil to steal, kill, or destroy. Amen. Every seed that you, have, that you have ever planted will be available for a reaping. But you got to go get it. Every seed that you have ever planted will be available for a reaping, but you have to be the one to get it. Pastor Trish can't go get it for you. Pastor Derek can't go get it for you. You gotta be the one that say, I'm gonna go get my blessing in the name of Jesus. Declare this with me. Say, I am not just a good giver. I'm a good reaper. I'm gonna say that again. I'm not just a good giver, but I'm a good reaper. See, reaping will take away your laziness. Reaping will make you want to bust a move on the devil when you when you see him coming for your stuff. Because you will say, no, 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 I didn't just guilt towards this right here. I put sweat and tears in this. So I'm reaping everything that God has for me. I'm not just a good giver. I got to learn how to be a good reaper. The problem is we don't know how to be good reapers. Because if it don't sprout up how we want it to sprout up. We don't know how. We don't know what to have. Well, we know it. I don't know how to handle it. 
Bible this. I just don't know. God gave it, but I just don't know what we do. Is this a God anyway? Because the grass don't look as green as I thought it was going to. Go and water it then. I mean, we'd be confused about God's blessings. See, watch this. Y'all got to walk with me today because I, I got I to gotta get y'all into this harvest. Oh, no, I was time. I got past that. Don't forget me, no fingers, okay? I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> See, watch this. God blessed me with my kids as my harvest from seeds of prayer, from seeds of fasting. From seeds of blessing others when they got pregnant and had baby showers and all of that. Matter of fact, I hosted showers. I, I did everything. See, see, watch this. Those were seeds. Y'all say those were seeds. See, God bless with my kids. What are my kids? My kids are my heart. Say that again. My kids are my heart. Now, I sold the seed of prayer, fasting, so, uh, gifts, all of that. But my kids are my harvest. So I expect to reap from my harvest. Reaping means I'm gathering. If I need to go and gather my son, because he's doing something foolish. He found himself in ISS and yawning. I got to go gather him. Because guess what? That's my harvest. I got to get him together because I got to remind him, you my harvest. And my harvest is going to produce much fruit. My harvest, my fruit ain't finna be rotten in ISS. Come on, somebody say amen. I'm preaching to Tristan right now. You are my harvest. And because you are my harvest, my harvest got to produce much fruit. So when I see my harvest not producing much fruit, I got to go gather him up. Come on, somebody. I got to go gather Deshaun up. I got to go gather Deja up. And we're going to have a little talk with Jesus. And we're going to figure out how to fix this situation. Because guess what? That's my harvest. That's my harvest. I put too much seed in the ground for my harvest to be cutting up and acting a fool in school. I put too much seed in the ground for my harvest to be showing up like ain't got no sin. I got too much seed in the ground. My babies are my harvest. Show out if you want to. I'ma show up because guess what? I put too much into you for you to be acting a poor fool when you get around strangers. If I need to go gather him, I'm going to go gather him. If I need to go gather Deja, I'm going to go gather her. Because it's not about them. It's about them producing harvest. Come on, somebody. Sometimes you got to look at your child and say, baby, you my harvest. Y'all better look at y'all spouse and say, honey, you my harvest. I got too much seed in the ground when it comes to you. You got to look at your spouse and say, I see what the devil is doing, but I declare that you my harvest, and I'm going to reap some good stuff from you. The devil ain't going to steal, kill, and destroy nothing up in here. Say, up in here, the devil ain't stealing nothing. I'm going to look at my harvest, even if it look frail, even if it look dry, even if it look caught up. Come on, somebody. That's my harvest. And when the devil wanna show up and show out on my harvest, I'm gonna begin to pluck up some stuff that I've never plucked up before. Cause that's my harvest. You gotta get aggressive about your harvest. Look at your spouse and say, You my harvest. Your spouse to be speak to the atmosphere. You my harvest. Look at your business. You my harvest. Look at your bank account. You my harvest. I expect you to fill up in the name of Jesus. What I gotta do? What I gotta do? I gotta sow some more seeds for you? What I gotta do, bank account? Cause you my harvest. I ain't playing with y'all. You gotta look at all the stuff that God has given you. You got it because you sow some kind of seed somewhere. The problem is we ain't looking at stuff with fresh eyes. You don't see your spouse as your harvest. You don't see your children as your harvest. You don't see your bank account as your harvest. You don't see your business as your harvest. Baby, you sold too much seed for that harvest to sprout up and you look at it and just let it die. Just let the devil do what he want to do. Ain't nobody got time for that. All of that, that's my harvest. It's my harvest. Get aggressive about my harvest. Playing about my harvest. You just don't recognize what harvest is. That's the problem. Number three. Don't give up on your seed. 
Yes, See, Lord. this is where Christians fell short. Yes. Because I got to talk to you. I don't care how many times I got to talk to you about how God divinely connected you and your spouse. And you better not let the devil destroy what's yours because it's yours. Yes. How many Zoom means we got to have? Do I got to come over your house and all, anoint your house with oil and declare that you will not give up on your harvest? How many counseling sessions we got to have? It don't matter because the end goal is that you are not going to give up on your harvest. Why? Because guess what, Tommy? You my harvest. God brought you in here. I sowed a seed. You better sprout up and you better produce a harvest with your husband. God gave Pastor Derek enough seed. He gave us a harvest. And then just as surely as you walk with us, you talk with us, listen, you my harvest. Come on, somebody. You my harvest. Tristan, you my harvest. And just as surely as you are our harvest, you better produce seed, baby. Ain't nobody finna let you give up up in here. Because if you thought that was going to happen, you came to the wrong church. Go next door. They might let y'all be like, oh, okay. Well, y'all just sign the papers and do what y'all do. Go next door. Because they might let you give up. But this church, come on, somebody. These leaders, come on, y'all. All of us, we ain't finna let in no let up in your set. Come on, now. Ain't no let up in the set. Because you my harvest. Kids, and when you go to Alabama, you better remember you my harvest. And you represent Prophet and Trish, Pastor Trish, whatever you want to call me. When you get over there to Alabama, say, oh, Pastor Trish said, I'm her harvest. They're not cut up over here. I better be down like four flat tires with an OCI even when I'm at University of Alabama. Because Galatians 6 and 9 says, so let us not get tired of doing what is good. Right, 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 right. At just the right time, just the right. we will reap what got to marry, y'all. Y'all, MOC, y'all going to know this by heart. What has to marry? Time and season, baby. At just the right time, we will reap a what? Harvest. We're just married in that, in that scripture. Time and harvest. Time and harvest. If we don't give up, I, I saw this quote. It said, your harvest is determined by what you do while you're waiting for it. Come on, somebody. Your harvest is what you do while you're waiting for it to produce what you want it to produce. Come on. Your harvest is determined by what you do while waiting for it to be who you need it to be, what you need it to be, how you need it to be. So my thing is, what are you doing while you waiting? Declare this, I'm expecting a record-breaking harvest. Oh, see, y'all there. How many people? Y'all are real nothing? I am expecting a record-breaking harvest. Come on, come on, say it again. I am expecting a record-breaking harvest. You know where that comes from? Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Come on, somebody. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. The things that the Lord has for us. I'm expecting a record-breaking harvest. What does that mean? That means that's something I ain't never seen before. My God. If it's breaking records, that means I ain't never seen that before. I need to see something I ain't never seen before. A lot is dependent upon how you wait. Amen. I'm going to say that again. A lot will depend on how you wait. And what are you saying when, while you wait? Because whatever you say while you wait could destroy the fruit of your harvest. What you say while you wait could destroy the potential fruit of your harvest. What you say while you wait could destroy. How, where do I get that from? Jesus saw the fig tree. The fig tree had potential fruit. Come on, somebody. The fig, the fig tree had potential fruit. That could have possibly popped up at a, at a time, at any time and hour. But Jesus looked at it. While he was waiting on the pop-up, 
Jesus said something along the lines, you will wither and die and not produce fruit again. What you say while you wait makes a difference. Jesus spoke death because he had the authority. But are you speaking death to something that should be rising up? Mm, my God. Number four, I got to speed this up. Keep the weeds out your heart. How to call it in, keep the weeds out. Because you know weeds will choke up fruit. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to keep it, to dress it and to keep it. He was talking about the original man, which was Adam. He took him, put him in a garden. Watch this. He put him in his harvest. <laughs> but he didn't put him in a harvest so that he could look at how pretty it was. He put Adam in a harvest because he wanted him to dress it up. He wanted him to keep it. So the word keep means to put a hedge of thorns around. Oh my God, I see y'all got to pay attention to this. When he said, I want you to keep it, in Hebrew, keep means to put a hedge of thorns around, to watch over it, to guard it, to protect and to safeguard it. But we get in harvest and we don't know how to keep it. I don't know how to keep the money. I don't know how to keep my husband, keep my wife. I don't know how to keep this business rolling. I don't know how, because a little frustration come in, and I don't know how to keep it. I don't know how to keep it. But God said begin to find the weeds. Begin to find the weeds and begin to pluck it up. When a farmer plants seed in the ground, he doesn't just walk away and hope for the best. He has too much to do. So you got to remember, you got to begin to find the weeds, insecurity, fear, rage, anger, jealousy, uh, uh, attitude, pride, perversion, anything in your garden, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, fornication, lying, cheating. Find the weeds in your garden. Because your, your, your harvest can't sprout up like it want to because you got too many weeds in there. Number five, you got to water your seed. Let the people praise thee, O God. Let all the people praise thee. Then the earth shall yield her increase, and God, even our God, will bless. Amen. So a farmer would never think of planting a field full of seeds and then neglect to water it. It would be a death sentence for his crops. Are you forgetting to water your harvest? Water your harvest with the word. Come on, somebody. Speak the word over your harvest. Speak life. So what are your seeds? You got to identify what are your seeds. Where are your seeds? If you don't know where your seeds are, you can't water them. How do you water them? Love and attention. You ain't giving it love and attention, you're missing it. Wisdom. The fruit of the spirit. Water it with money. Number six, I'm moving forward, God, I got a few minutes. I got the hands. Put in the sickle for your harvest. Y'all like, what is a sickle? Put in the sickle for your harvest. Go to Mark 4 and 29. It says, but when the grain is ripe and permits, immediately he sends forth the reapers and puts in the sickle because the harvest stands ready. What is a sickle? A sharp instrument used for cutting crops during a harvest. Our words of faith helps us to cut down harvest. Our words of faith, the word, helps your harvest to not only grow, but it helps you. The word, what is a, where's the sickle? Something that cuts down harvest. What, how, does, how does the Bible describe the word? Is it sharper than a two-edged sword? So you need something that will cut. What well, cuts? The word cuts. The word is going to bring increase to the harvest, and the word will also allow you to cut fruit from your harvest. The word helps you to cut fruit from your harvest. And the last thing, command your harvest to come in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've done all yeah. of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Come on on now. Uh -huh. That's right. 
Amen. You know, thank God all day. Amen. I did everything the prophet said. Amen. It's time for you to show up and show out. That's right. Amen. Keep decreeing it until you see it. Amen. So come on on. Keep decreeing it until you see it. Amen. Job 22, it says that you will decree a thing yes. or decide on a matter in yes. another translation. Yes. And it will be what? Yes, sir. For you and light will shine in your ways. Amen. You will decree a thing mm -hmm. and it will be established. Numbers 23 and 19 says, God is not a man mm -hmm. that he should lie, mm -hmm. nor the son of man that he should repent or change his mind. As, as he said, and will not he do? Or has he spoken, or will he not fulfill? God said you have the power of life and death in your mouth, mm -hmm. and those who love it will eat of his fruit. Mm -hmm. So if God is telling you to decree a thing, it'll be established. Is God lying? Because I just gave you the scripture, God is not a man that he should lie. But, it, but did God say decree it? Did God say water it? I gave you scriptures for everything, right? Water it, decree it, pull up the weeds. So if God told you to do all of that so you can see a harvest, is God lying? Or are you just lazy? I'm going to ask again. Is God lying or are you just lazy? Let me rephrase it another way. Is God lying or are you just sick and tired of being sick and tired and you've given up on your fruit? Oh, my heart. Is God lying or have you chosen to forget what he said? Is God lying when he said, I am the Lord thy God and that with me nothing is impossible? But you look at your harvest and you be like, well, it ain't sprouting up. Is God lying? Or are you just tired? Is God lying or have you become impatient? Is God lying or does harvest just sound good to you? And you can shout when you say, oh, prophetically, we finna get hard. Hallelujah. But then when it's time for the farmer to put in work, Jesus. you are the farmer. Lay hands on yourself. Say, I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer. And I will not get lazy in this season. I will not get lazy in this season because my harvest has to produce my harvest has to produce see you got to give harvest no other option but to produce you know when you give harvest a different option when you don't water it when you don't speak life to it. You know, they tell you all the time that if you get plants in your house, you got to begin to speak to those plants. You got to begin to love on them. And when the plants feel or hear your love, hear a sound, they begin to grow. The problem is we want harvest, but we ain't speaking to it. We ain't watering it. We ain't pulling up the sheep. We ain't decreeing a thing. We, we, we give up because we tired of looking at it being the same way that it has been for umpteen years. But God said, 